Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Empires and Puzzles video. And in this video, I'm going to show you the calendar for the month of August. Might help you make decisions on where to budget or just if you're curious what's coming up and what you can expect for this month. So a quick shout out to the Heimdall bot and Thor online. This is where I found this version, though it looks like it was created by Zartanis. So shout out to them as well for putting this together. It's a lot more feature rich than the one that they post on the forum. So starting with the new hero of the month, we have Ithar. All right, and then Valhalla Forever, which has been currently active now. We have the ridiculous Sam and Loki costume, Balder costume, and Thor costume, uh, none of which are that significant. Actually, I think this just ended, so you didn't miss out. Untold Tales, we have, uh, what's his name? Ultrox Forces and Thalassa Forces Elite Hero, perhaps the best in the entire portal. Um, none is worth going crazy over, so just keep that in mind. You do have a shot, but I wouldn't push your luck. Um, Thalassa has received a buff recently and is quite a nice hero with ailment protection and a pretty significant boosted health. Um, so that's going on until... Hard to tell exactly when that ends. Maybe that is Saturday um, night for me, Pacific Standard Time. All right, then we have Dynasty of the Dunes, also currently active. Hathor, Bennu, and Set. Hathor, clearly the hero that they know everybody wants in here, with the other two being so-so. Um, we have... Looks like the new tournament is Attack Boost, 5-star, no yellow. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the tiny stuff here. You can see the emblem quests and stuff like that, too. And the tournaments I won't mention. I'm just going to mention the events here. All right, starting on Monday, Kelvala begins. And it looks like it will continue for the entire month. Uh, judging by the last seasonal event like this, it went for six weeks. So they could really milk the deals calendar. So uh, expect something similar. Another Aether Summon coming around again. They are really pushing that hard. And then we have the Costume Chamber, which looks like it will feature the second costume for Elena for the first time, and the second costume of Obicon, which is a repeat and quite a nice one. Uh, nothing, nothing worth chasing, um, but I kind of feel that way generally. All right, you can see on the Mondays there, Mount Umber, Shrikewood, Frost March, and Farholm coming around. Uh, we also have a Farholm active at the moment of recording this video. All right, so after the costume chamber is going to be the challenge festival featuring costume Puss in Boots, Frog Prince for the first time, and costume Marie Therese. Um, Frog Prince is probably gonna be the best hero in there. I don't remember what he looks like from beta, but uh, Marie Therese is, is a, not a good hero. And the costume for Puss in Boots, I recall being underwhelmed by, so. Pretty typical for them to put one exceptional hero in with a couple others. They're really into this triple feature thing at the moment. Uh, and again, because I think it dilutes the chance of getting the really good hero, which can push people to go past their limits or budgets. Okay, um, and then coming around on Monday again, we have the War of Three Kingdoms and the Contest of Elements. We have circled back around to yellow, which I believe was the first one. And then now we have green back again. Two new heroes, looks like Zuni and Alfie with Roz being featured. Um, stat wise, these are some of the strongest heroes in the game, but special skill wise, not always the case. I think Zandrella is the clear uh, winner of this portal and naturally she will not be featured. So not sure about Zuni and Alfie, but we'll see. Um, Coming up on Thursday, we have Tremors of the Underwild with costume Phileas Fogg, costume Octros for the first time, and costume Elizabeth. Um, Octros was a pretty strong hero when he came out, so I imagine the costume is trying to bring back some of his former relevance. The other two costumes featured are nothing significant and don't really stand up too well in today's meta. Serviceable, of course, but not, not too competitive with the other uh, strength of heroes that we have coming out. And then we have a Covenant quest, which for some reason does not coincide with the Covenant portal. 
So this will be just the quest where it's kind of like a raid format fighting against different families of heroes. Kind of fun. Um, another Aether Summon. So this is like every two weeks they are pushing the double limit breaks hard. Uh, quick plug for myself. If you haven't seen the video where I explain how many levels you actually get from the limit break, check that out. It's very interesting. Um, it's something I'd wondered about for a while and finally sat down and did the math and that was the response I was seeing from other people as well. It was really interesting to see that. They had also wondered but weren't willing to do the math. So I did the math. Check that out if you haven't already. It's very interesting, especially Limit Break 2 versus Limit Break 1. All right. Same day, we have Atlantis Rises coming around again with Costume Ursina, Costume Atomos, Hanitra, and Baller. Pretty weak pool of heroes there. Uh, Atlantis Rises is struggling pretty hard lately. One of the only good costumes in there being Costume Ariel, I would say. Probably the best. Can't think of all the other five stars off the top of my head. Um, but she's fantastic. These other ones, not so much. Again, all heroes are serviceable. It just depends on the level of play and the level of competition you're aiming for. All right, Tower of Magic coming back around. So if you've got those troop tokens saved up, you can now use them to attempt to get the magic troops that you have or that you don't have. Or perhaps you have them already and you're just looking for feeders. I do recommend saving epic troop tokens for these towers, either the ninja tower, the sticks tower, or the magic tower, because with the different troop variant, that is the ninja troop, the cyclops troop, and the wizard troop, you have an extra 5% chance for four star troops in those portals from 10% up to 15%. And that is just more XP for leveling up your troops. So save those. If you have been, here's a good chance to use them. We have Nadezda and Cristobal featured. Some pretty poor heroes for this portal. Uh, and, you know, we're just seeing this classic feature three. Two of them pretty weak, if not downright bad, depending on where you're looking at it from. And the one new one. Uh, with these heroes, it's a bit unfortunate that the passive of the uh, new heroes is so much, so much better than the older one. Uh, because... The older one applied to a single hero. It was a plus 5% mana stack to a single hero. The new one could have been a negative 5% mana stack to a single hero, but instead it is to all heroes. I really feel like they should buff the passive of the older heroes to give a 5% stack to everyone, just so that it's on par. The newer heroes are already better. They don't need to have a passive that is so much better. But facing those heroes on defense, the newer ones, that is, is quite a pain because as those stacks build up, it throws off all the breakpoints and uh, really screws up the uh, effects that you have worked hard to achieve with your troop leveling, your diligent troop leveling, I should say, over long periods of time. All right, Monday, new Path of Adventure begins. That is Path of Valor and Path of Giants. We have Valhalla featuring Costume Norns, Costume Odin, and Costume Gephion. Uh, Norns, I believe, they is one of the costumes that they have changed the mana speed of. I, I believe she's been changed to slow for some reason. Um, she had her moment with the Mythic Titans. However, that's just a pengy thing now. So not sure I see anything worth going after in that portal, especially with these he uh, featured heroes, even if you have them already. Yeah, it'd be nice to get the costumes. Maybe it's worth just a couple pulls if you have them already uh, with resources invested, but... Overall, not a very strong pool. All right. Surprisingly enough, Forces will be featured again in the same month. Kind of shocking. Um, this is uh, maybe they're trying to make up for the kind of weak portals in between the beginning and the end of the month. Um, Dynasty of Dunes and Untold Tales being some of the better ones at the beginning of the month. Pretty mediocre throughout. Contest of Elements is probably decent because it's one of the more expensive portals. And stat-wise, those heroes are very strong. But he'll be featured again. In addition to Gellert and Sido. Sido received a nice buff recently. Forces received a smaller buff. Um, Gellert, I recall not being that impressed by, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. That hero will be featured twice. It, it appears this is not a guarantee of anything to happen. It is, um, I think, best prediction from a consistent pattern. However, that does not mean it's guaranteed to happen. So let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video. 
Um, if you did, please leave a comment saying so and hit the like button as well. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. All it's going to do is give you more of the videos that you already enjoy watching to keep you informed and up to date uh, with my insights as well, which I think are valuable. So um, anything else? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.